everybody. So today we're going to be talking about how to get into medical school. Alright, so how to get into medical school. This video is meant to be a motivator for you. Make sure to like this video. Do not get discouraged, okay? So I'm gonna break this down into two different sections about how to get into medical school. There is the preparation and then there's opportunity. You may have heard that luck is actually when preparation meets opportunity. Same type of thing with getting into medical school. So let's get right into it. So first, grades. Are they important? Of course they are important. Probably as early as ninth grade. And that's because you know you want to get into an undergraduate program and they start to look at your grades from grade nine. And then from the undergraduate program, you will soon be applying to get into medical school. And some people may even be interested in going into a medical school program where you get your bachelor's as well as your medical school degree. So in those cases, early good grades are really important. Okay, and maybe just as equally important as your grades is your character. Now, how can you tell your character through an application? Well, it's through your experiences. So whether that's community service or your work experience, try to get something in there that shows that you're interested in the health field and not just talking about it. You know, a lot of people are going to talk about in their application, well, I wanted to be a doctor ever since I was yay high or ever since I went to my first doctor's visit. But what sets you apart is the actual actions that you take feeding in a nursing home, helping with paperwork, an emergency room, helping in the volunteer shop or helping transporting patients, anywhere where you can get a glimpse into the medical life and what you're possibly going to be getting into. It can show that you're altruistic, that you care about other people, that you actually know what is about to happen in your medical career and you're not just talking about it from some type of fantasy standpoint. You have more than a Grey's Anatomy experience to know what it is like to become a doctor. Another thing that's really important during your preparation phase is getting into extracurricular activities. People in medical schools as well as later on in residency want to know that you're more than a bookworm. They want to know that you have personality. They want to know that you have lifestyle balance and can juggle many things in a schedule. Now, a lot of people go through personal challenges in their life and honestly what doesn't kill you can make you stronger. So you use that towards um, a positive in your application. Don't let it get you down. But at the same time, keep in mind that medical schools in general want to see no breaks in your schedule. But at the same time, if you're having a hardship, like a death in the family or some financial hardship and it's really stressing you out and it's actually going to take a toll on your application, I'd rather that you would delay your application or delay um, your school after talking to an advisor if you know that you're gonna come out with D's and C's and F's. So um, talk to your counselors about your particular personal challenge. But like I said, you can use it as a positive in your application and show how that experience made you stronger. Another thing that was really important for me and I really suggest it for other people is to make connections really early. And I'm talking about connections in the medical field, in medical schools, maybe even get a mentor, somebody who you can look up to, but also guide you through career choices and helping you to visualize where you may be, getting exposure to different specialties, get connected, get a mentor. That helped me tremendously through my application process um, because there was no doctor in my immediate family that I could look up to and get the information I needed and get the push that I needed to get into medical school. Another good reason to have a mentor or have somebody that maybe went to that medical school is that on some medical school applications, it actually asks you if you know somebody who went there or if you've been referred by somebody. Now, on one end, I kind of think, well, maybe that's favoritism because they want certain people to get in. But on the other hand, maybe they're just trying to get people who are familiar with the program or um, 
know what they're getting into and would more likely not want to let that friend or family member down basically that they could be accountable to somebody and um, bring up the name of their school now that you have all this preparation now we're looking at the opportunity it's a whole nother ball game so where the opportunities start, and you might not think that this is an opportunity, but one is the MCAT exam. It's called the MCAT, it's spelled M-C-A-T, and it stands for Medical College Admission Test. Now this is gonna be the first, and don't get scared, but this is the first longest exam of your life. Seven and a half hours. Yes, you heard me correctly, seven and a half hours. You sit for about six and a half unless you're faster than that. But there is a way to make it more um, humane. <laughs> there are breaks and practice makes perfect. There's gonna be, um, well, you should take about six months or no, no less than three months to prepare for this exam. And some of that should include, of course, the core information um, that you probably learned in your undergrad and some of it in high school. And then there should be the part where you practice. And if you build on your endurance, when it comes to exam day, you'll be okay. Let me know if you need more information about that exam. Typically, you wanna apply for that exam and sit for the exam the year before you apply. You need that score to get into 99% of medical schools. And you want to have, There's. I don't think there's really a pass or fail, but you wanna get a certain score to be competitive. So if you apply for and sit for that exam the year before you apply for medical school, then at least you have that same year that you apply for medical school if you want to improve your score. There are programs that can help you with this exam um, to make it more structured, but if you are good with self-study, there are tools out there, practice exams that you can um, use. The exam itself costs 310 US dollars. All right, so now we're into the application. The application does take time. Now, this is not your typical job application. This application is long, it's thorough, and this is what the medical schools are using to gauge you. All right, so do not wait to start this application. I believe the application period where you could actually submit your application is somewhere around September, but you could start working on it in the summertime. But um, also start, you know, just brainstorming about different things. Think about your personal statement. Start to get help to write that. Another area in your application will involve references or talk to your mentors. Start to let them know that you're applying to medical schools. You want your letters of reference to be personalized. You want those people to know you very well and to shed you in a very positive light to these medical schools. All right, what's included on the application? I mean, things about your strengths, your weaknesses, your personal statement about why you want to become a doctor, then your typical educational and personal timeline. So you want to tailor your application to the school so that they know that you specifically are interested in them. There's a standard application and there may be additional questions that the medical school may want, but you don't want to use generic answers that make it sound like you're just a computer just giving them this information. It's not personalized to their school. If it's a school that's in an inner city, you're going to want to talk a little bit about why you want to be in the inner city. You wouldn't want to talk about why you want to do rural medicine. The school is going to kind of take that as an insult or look at you as a disorganized person. Now, every school does cost money to apply to. So you're gonna need to save up money, scholarships, bursaries. The application to medical school through the AAMC costs $160, and each additional medical school costs $40 each. But when you look at 20 different programs, that's actually gonna be a lot of energy, that's gonna be a lot of money that you're putting into this application. So really take the time and look through your application and make sure you're making it personal to each one of those schools. Apply locally. Medical schools give precedence to the people who are from their state or from their province. They want to know that you are invested in where you live in and that you want to live and stay there and provide for the community and contribute to the health system there. Strategically, if you wanted to move, let's say states or provinces or even to another country, if you can relocate yourself maybe during undergrad to be in that place I think that would actually make you more favorable to that medical program or if you mention it in your personal statement then they'll say oh, okay now I see why they have a connection with where we're 
located. Okay, so now that you got your applications out, then you have to wait to get a response to see if they invite you for an interview or a secondary application. Great, if you made it to an interview, you did great. And you can look at my video on the do's and don'ts for residency interviews and you may get some good tips in there that I think would apply to medical school as well. But it's your time to shine. It's time to be uniquely you, but still professional. After the interview, they'll decide if you got into the program, if you're on the waiting list, or if you just didn't get in. You want to make it right off the bat if you can. The more time it takes to get into medical school, it actually decreases your chances. This is not to discourage you, but to make sure that you are on your A-game from the very beginning. All right, so I think we touched on all the points I wanted to bring across to you today. Preparation is key. Stay ahead of the game. Stay focused. Stay positive. Make sure to focus on your strengths. Don't get bogged down by your weaknesses. You don't have to know everybody in the applications office. You don't have to come from a family of doctors to get into medical school. In fact, I think that might help you to be a better doctor. I've been there. I've done it. I've got through. I'm happy with where I'm at. You can do it too. Let me know if you have any questions or if there's something I may not have answered. Let me know if you need a mentor. Just leave whatever questions come to mind, related or unrelated to this video, down below. And I'll be happy to get to them. I try to touch each and every question or comment that comes down in the comment section. So make sure to like this video and subscribe if you want to see more. Signing out, Medically Yours, Dr. C. Bye.